Hello and welcome to another Big Orbit Games unboxing video. I'm Chris and today we are looking at the X-Wing 2.0 core set which is just being released now. So I'm just going to get right in there and start opening. So the box looks awesome uh, to start with. Bit of an upgrade over the uh, first order slash resistance one that came out uh, a couple of years back now. So, inside there is, as always with FFG, a lot of cardboard. Lots and lots of tokens, lots and lots of ship uh, tokens and things like that. And the miniatures, which we'll get to in a minute. You've got their wonderful little What We Do book which we can pretty much not talk about. Um, so a little thing about if you're new to X-Wing, expanding your squadron. And uh, what to get with, like what to, to get next kind of thing. And also if you're a veteran, how to update your collection to 2.0 with the uh, conversion kits, which I'll be covering in another video. Uh, then we've got the quick start guide. So just how to put everything together quickly and get playing as fast as possible. Um, just quick game set up, playing with the contents of the box. Uh, then you've got the main rule book, which is the thing that most people will want to see out of this at the moment, purely because, well, there's a few changes, uh, namely, there's a few extra tokens, um, which are fairly important to the game, and a couple of other changes as well. One of the changes is that the X-Wing moves, which we will get to as well. Um, and yeah, just lots of explanation, but very, very useful. So we've got pilot cards and upgrade cards and the damage deck. Flight stands. I don't think those have changed very much from 1.0. And the dice. Hmm, that's strange. So I, I opened one of these yesterday. And it actually had four attack dice in it. <laughs> I was expecting that all of them would have four attack dice in them. Um, that one must have just been a lucky miss pack. Because you only get three. If you get four, good for you. And then the range ruler as well, which also hasn't actually changed from the uh, the original core. So, let's put some of this back in the box and move the box out of the way so that we can... We don't really need to cover the dice. The dice haven't changed. Exactly the same. And the connectors for the uh, maneuver dials haven't changed either. So flight stands haven't changed. Those haven't changed. Let's have a look at the stuff that has changed. So we've got miniatures. So starting with the TIE Fighter. So as always, decent paint job. Feels a little bit flimsy, but they always have done. Um, I actually think they've changed their their painting slightly. Uh, it feels like they've they put a wash over it or something because they, all the miniatures that I've seen uh, seem slightly darker tinted, which is a good thing actually. Like they they just kind of look nicer. Um, they've obviously upped their painting standards a little bit. So yeah, the TIE Fighter looks cool. And the X-Wing also looks very cool with a little astromech just behind the cockpit. And the best thing about these is this. You can lock S-foils into attack position by opening them. And that is actually relevant to the game as well. So um, you can, after executing certain maneuvers with the X-Wing, um, close the wings. And it makes you slightly worse at shooting. And that also rotates for some reason. Is that supposed to? Or is that just a... I don't know. Thought I'd broken it for a second there. Um, and then you're better at shooting when the wings are opened. So... That is a nice little touch that they've gone with now. 
Um, so very happy about that. And there's several ships from the new wave that have removable parts. So that's the ships. Um, luckily I bought a knife with me. Because I know FFG products. I know that I'm going to need a knife to get into half of this stuff. Alright, so we've got one thing to mention, the dials do look very nice now. Um, to be honest, I actually prefer the scum dials. I, I don't know what it is. The colours are just really nice. Um, but each of the ships has an upgraded um, manoeuvre dial as well. So there's just slightly more manoeuvres than they had before. And the dials have changed. I'm actually going to pop the, uh, the X-Wing out. Which one's the X-Wing? It'll be the red one that also says T65 on the back. Um, so the dials now will sit. How will they sit? That seems really weird. You should be able to see. What? I'm confused now. I've done something wrong, haven't I? <laughs> Either that or that's just really badly miscut. Because you, you should be able to see the maneuvers that you want to execute like that as they go around. Oh, derp. Okay, it goes that way. <laughs> That'd be why. So, basically, it sits that way. Um, because that's the back side. I know what I'm doing, honestly. Um, so yeah, then it rotates around. This little arrow here is the maneuver that you want to execute. And this is just so you can thumb it around easier because some of the older ones were a little bit tricky, especially if they were a little bit stiff. Um, so yeah, some decent maneuvers on the X-Wing. A lot of twos, a lot of threes, a uh, couple of good fours as well. So you've got the, the Talon Roll, you've got the K-Turn, and a straight four as well. And a lot of the twos are, are blue. So I've changed things from green to blue for uh, your good maneuvers. And yeah, with the TIE Fighter, similar sort of dial really. Apart from it's got a 3K. Um, doesn't have the Talon Roll. So TIE Fighters are a bit zippy. Don't have any real one maneuvers other than the turns. But yeah, pretty good. Also, there's a couple of things with uh, the ship tokens. Is that you now have this thing called... Um, Oh, uh, what's it called? Yeah, I'm just going to look in the rule book. I know what it's called. I've forgotten what it's called. Bullseye, that's the one. Bullseye arc. So straight down the middle is the bullseye arc. Which, uh, there are several cards that re like relate to that in the game now. Um, so if you have someone in your bullseye arc, you'll get benefits. So, outmaneuvering your opponent is very important and trying to get them dead centered as well. So we've got the uh, maneuver um, templates which haven't changed a whole lot in the sense that they're all the exact same length. Uh, the one thing that is different there is now a line straight down the middle of each which is to help with guiding your ship along for incomplete maneuvers. And also they, they have like all of the maneuvers you can execute with that particular template uh, printed on. Um, I believe they were mostly on there already, but it's just useful to have that as a reference. Uh, a few of the tokens have kind of changed a little bit. Um, focus, a little bit of a different design, but obviously the eye, so same, same, um, yeah, picture, icon. Icon, that was the word I was looking for. Um, shield tokens are now square. It's fair enough. Uh, you've got disarm tokens, which there's several cards that, and even pilots that uh, relate to ships being disarmed for a turn, which means you can't shoot uh, on the next round. And yeah, you've got stress tokens. Um, these are the new target locks and the evades and these are critical markers 
And the last lot, you've got force markers, well, force charges. Um, the force is now in the game properly, which is really cool. Um, so several force using pilots that uh, get benefits from using their force charges to, to have different effects. And you've got charge counters as well, which relate to a lot of the weapons and upgrade cards. Uh, basically, you just flip a charge counter over uh, to say that you've used it, because all of these are double-sided. So when you've used it, you flip it over, it's red on the other side to show that it's been used. You can gain them back, so you flip them back to the proper side. Uh, this is the first player marker, and you've also got warp markers, so, um, well, hyperspace markers. So, if you're playing an escalation game, you have these on the table, and your ships can kind of warp in. And, uh, yeah, you can continue playing in your escalation game with your freshly warped in ships. So, let's have a look at the damage deck, just briefly, because uh, there's not a whole lot to look at for the damage deck other than it is slightly upgraded. Uh, so, you know, bunch, oh, blinded pilot's still there, great. Um, wounded pilot, stunned, console fire, damaged engine, weapons failure, hull breach, so a lot of these are the same. Structural damage, damage sensor array, loose stabilizer, disabled power regulator, fuel leak, Lots of your leaks and a few direct hits in there as well. There's actually five direct hits in there. Ouch. And there's a lot of cards, whether upgrades or pilots, that relate to flipping um, damage cards one way or the other. So the crits kind of matter. I think the mechanic is expose. So you like expose a card if you flip it face up. But yeah, onto the pilots then. So we've got Luke Skywalker, who is amazing. Um, so obviously X-wing pilot. He has two force charges, and the little arrow next to it means he gains a, like he can gain those back. So after you become the defender, but before dice are rolled, you may recover a force. So he is going to be using those those force counters to to modify dice all over the place. I uh, got Jack Porkins. Uh, which is very thematic, actually. Um, I think they've done a good job with, with kind of linking this to the film. So after you receive a stress token, you may roll one attack dice to remove it. On a hit, result, suffer a damage. Um, I do like the theme of that. So he gets stressed. He thinks he can pull up, but he can't. And he blows up. So, yeah. Uh, Red Squadron Veteran and Blue Squadron Escort. So those of you have four choices of X-Wing pilot. If you're playing an escalation battle, once one of those, you'd probably start with, I think you do actually start with the Blue Squadron Escort. Uh, and then every time your ship is destroyed, uh, a new one comes in from the hyperspace markers. So they get progressively better. So then the TIE Fighters, you've got Aiden Versio. Um, so the Pilot Skill 4 guy, you've got Valen Rudor, Night Beast, Black Squadron Ace times two, and Obsidian Squadron Pilot times two, and then Academy Pilot times two. So a good range of TIE Fighter Pilots there. Um, I do kind of like this guy. Being able to spend your charge counter to prevent a damage is quite nice. Uh, he can't get those back though by the looks of it, so it is kind of a one-shot thing, but it's like an extra shield almost. Um, and Valen Rudor, after a friendly ship at range 0 to 1 defends, after damage is resolved, if any, you may perform an action. So that's kind of cool as well. So, you, yeah, if you're about to get shot, you might want to take an evade. Uh, if you're about to shoot, you might want to take a focus. Uh, or you can barrel roll out of someone's arc or into someone's arc if you want to shoot them. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Night Beast, after you fully execute a blue maneuver, get a free focus. That's pretty awesome. Um, and then you got the generics. So yeah, the TIE Fighters seem pretty good. And then you got upgrade cards, which are now giant compared to what they used to be. Uh, so if you've got an abundance of uh, the 
small sleeves. You probably don't need them anymore unless you're just sleeving a damage deck. So we have Elusive, which is small medium ship upgrade. Uh, while you defend, you may spend uh, a charge counter to reroll one defense dice, and after you fully execute a red maneuver, recover a charge counter. So, yeah, it's quite nice. Outmaneuver, when you perform primary arc attack, if you're not in the defender's firing arc, the defender rolls one fewer defense dice. That's very nice if you're playing something like very nippy. Um, stuff that can bump out of arc a lot using barrels and things. Star Vipers come to mind. Um, Predator, while you perform primary attack if the defender's in your bullseye arc, you may reroll one attack dice. Uh, so as you can see, the bullseye arc is coming into play here. I don't know if you can quite see that, but the difference between the two. So, yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, you got heightened perception, so it's a force upgrade. At the start of the engagement phase, you may spend a force if you do engage at initiative 7 instead of your standard initiative value this phase. So, definitely going to be shooting first. Two of those in there. Instinctive aim. But I'm curious why there's two of those in there if there's only one forced user in the box. Huh. Weird. Instinctive aim, uh, if you perform a special attack, you can spend a force to ignore the focus or target lock requirement of using that weapon. Got sense, during the systems phase, choose a ship at range uh, zero to one, look at its dial, or if you spend a force, you can look at the dial of a ship range zero to three instead. Uh, just on the side, range zero is actually a thing in this. Um, so if you're on top, like as in touching something, you are at range zero of it. Uh, and that's quite useful information, so you know what actions to take, for instance. Uh, you've got supernatural reflexes. Before you activate, you can spend a force to perform a barrel roll or boost action. Then if you performed an action that you don't have on your action pass, suffer a damage. Um, yeah, quite cool for the X-Wings where... What's on the X-Wing card? Uh, so you could perform a boost with Luke, for instance, take a damage. Um, but if you need him in that position, could be worth it. Especially if that's going to put him in a position to get, you know, like four dice on someone. Um, yeah, it could be situationally very good. Uh, proton torpedoes. So, torpedo upgrade. Attack, you need to spend a target lock. Uh, you can spend a charge counter to change a hit result to a crit result. It comes with two charge counters on it. Um, rolls four dice from primary arc, and it's range two to three, and isn't modified by range. You've got an R2 astromech, so two charge counters after you reveal your dial, spend a charge and gain one disarm token to recover a shield. So good if you're already running away and don't want to shoot on the next round. R2-D2, after you re reveal your dial, you can spend a charge, gain one disarm token to recover a shield. Uh, this time it has three charge counters on it, so it's kind of like the upgraded version of the R2 Astromech. So, named characters are always better. Got R3 Astromech, maintain up to two locks. Each lock must be a different object. After you perform a lock action, you can acquire a lock. Uh, that's really good. Then R5 is spend a focus to repair a face down damage card or repair a face-up ship damage card. So, ship would be stuff like console fire. Uh, you can basically flip it face down and just spend your resources to do that rather than uh, your entire action to have a chance of flipping it face down. But then you could also spend an action to uh, repair a face down, which just gets rid of that card, which is kind of cool. Uh, R5D8, same thing, but with three charge counters. Your afterburners, after you fully execute a speed three to five maneuver, spend a charge counter to perform a boost, even while stressed. Um, that's pretty good. Hull upgrade, just flat out, plus one hull. Shield upgrade, flat out, plus one shield. And server motor S force open. Before you activate, you can flip this card. And S force closed. Way perform primary attack roll one fewer dice, but you gain the boost action on your bar, and also you can focus to red boost. So you can spend a focus token to perform a boost action that gives you a stress. So yeah, overall, 
some pretty good upgrades in there. Um, this is to do with the escalation thing. So, um, yeah, those are just if you want to play the escalation um, scenario out of the rule book. That's what those are for. And yeah, I mean, some good value in the set really, like some really good upgrades. Um, you get the, the two ships with some decent pilots, or two types of ships. Um, and yeah, just everything you need to, to get going in, in 2.0 really. Like, there's not really a whole lot more to say. Um, other than if you are considering it, I would definitely get it purely because it just gets you all this stuff that you're going to need. Um, so yeah, that is the 2.0 core set. I'm just going to quickly pack away these things. Um, and just make sure it all goes back in the box. And yeah, sorted. And it all packs away nicely. So yeah. Remember, you can buy and sell all of the components you've seen in the set uh, on our website, bigorbycards.co.uk. Uh, stay tuned for more X-Wing 2.0 videos. Um, I'll be doing the entire first wave. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for those. And uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button if you like it, and subscribe to the channel to keep updated. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.